Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Trace Elements Radio, live, of course, on traceelementsradio.com. Freedom Slips, Revolution Radio, Studio A. We have a lot to talk about today. I've been kind of wrestling with myself in the background and how I was going to approach this. Here's the problem. Not really a problem so much. I didn't want to go into Prince's death. Uh, For me. For me. He was like my guy. I lived close to Detroit. And um, we used to, when it was no problem and Detroit had cleaned itself up and I was a little bit sneaking underage over there I saw him play in a bar and then the next time I saw him in Detroit I was with my dad which was it was major because I had never gone with my dad to go and see anyone else at a concert so we saw Prince and it was you know my first big one I was maybe 17 I had seen dad all the time, but it was different, you know, when it's when it wasn't family. So it was pretty darn cool. He um I can say lots of things about him and I, I definitely will today. I wanna say what strikes me about this this event was because he was found in an elevator on the first floor. Sounds like nothing. Unless you followed this guy for a while. Now, we will hear all kinds of stories about it, and I'm sure you've heard about about these things already. But here's what we know. Not a drinker. Not a smoker. Um, Did not do drugs. Was completely against them. One thing, though, Prince hated elevators. He actually equated elevators with evil, the devil. He was a Jehovah's Witness, so I wasn't concerned about um, the quick cremation. I was basically fine with that. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses do. He was also not this guy was super plugged in. We'll talk about that today. And had been from from the beginning. From the beginning, he got a contract at, I think, just before his 18th birthday. Might have been 16. I should have researched this more. But it, he was young for this. And to sit in a meeting and talk to these guys face-to-face and get any kind of good deal when they were ripping off artists left, right, and center... He had full musical freedom. This is when he started. So the stories that he just came out about the Illuminati, that's that's crap. He always has. Always. Then, when he decided to, um, well, he always produced his own stuff, but he wanted his own record label. The company that he worked for, said that they owned his name. This was early 80s. Well, late 80s, early 90s. So he started writing Slave on his face, starting, started singing. He came out with this wonderful album called Emancipation when he won his name back. That's why he used that crazy symbol and why we kept hearing of the artist formerly known as Prince. He was strategic. This was not a stupid man. So he won that back. Stood in the faces of these guys and won that back. Next, under the name of Prince, they had some ownership of some of his songs. He had just won, fought, and won. Now, here's what's weird. 
Prince death on an elevator? Absolutely weird. Now, one of his friends came out and talked about this on E.T. Entertainment Tonight. Interesting name. Saying that he also knew that Prince hated elevators. And it was really spooky that Prince's dead body was found on the first floor in an elevator. Now, as reported by E.T., Reed spoke of Prince dislike, perhaps hate, for elevators. I had posted on the day Prince was found the Let's Go Crazy. Now, Prince thought and had spoken about this in interviews since the 80s. that he made it really clear that he hated them. He, as a matter of fact, would not take an elevator. Now, I don't know if that's every time, but from what I've read, he never got in elevators. So in 1984, the song, Let's Go Crazy, the lyrics, Prince likened an elevator to something evil, something taking control, something trying to bring a person down. Prince sang of battling against the elevator by pushing and pressing to a higher floor instead of allowing the elevator to take you down. So let me read the lyrics to this because I put this up. This This is quite, and I put it, it was an irony at the time, but this is, this is pretty deep. So let me read it. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Electric word life. It means forever, and that's a mighty long time. But I'm here to tell you there's something else. The afterworld. A world of never-ending happiness. You can always see the sun, day or night. So when you call up that shrink in Beverly Hills, you know the one. Doctor, everything will be all right. Instead of asking him how much of your time is left, ask him how much of your mind, baby. Because in this life, things are much harder than in the afterworld. In this life, you're on your own. And if the elevator tries to bring you down, go crazy. Punch a higher floor. If you don't like the word, the world you're living in, Take a look around you. At least you've got friends. You see, I called my old lady for a friendly word. She picked up the phone, dropped it on the floor. It's it's a sexy sound. I don't know if you want me to read it. (laughs) Is all I heard. So are we going to let the elevator bring us down? Oh, no. Let's go. Let's go crazy. Let's get nuts. Look for the purple banana and there till they put us in the truck. Let's go. We are all excited, but we don't know why. Maybe because we're all going to die. Hold on, guys. Really annoying. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. I hate it when people call. Now, if that's my son, he will be losing his mind, and I will have to go pick that up. You know, only child, love my life, and my son, obviously, so he will be losing his mind. If it rings again, I got to go. So anyway, this purple banana, till they put us in the truck, let's go. We're all excited. We don't know why. Maybe it's because we're all going to die, and when we do... What's it all for? What's still playing? Oh, okay. How about now? Better? Okay. Thank you. You better live now before the Grim Reaper comes knocking on your door. Tell me, are we going to let the elevator bring us down? Oh, no, let's go. Let's go crazy. 
Let's get nuts. Let's look for the purple banana till they put us in the truck. And then, you know, he goes on, he's singing, and then he's saying, Dr. Feelgood, Dr. Everything will be all right. We'll make everything go wrong. Pills and thrills and daffodils will kill. Hang tough, children. He's coming. He's coming. Coming. Take me away. Now, the daffodils. The daisies, like ring around the posy. This was about an infection and virus. And the he that Prince was talking about was Jesus. Very religious man. This song is about battling against the elevator, the evil, the devil, pushing a higher floor. And Reed spoke directly of the time that Prince talked about his thoughts on elevators. It was an elevator conversation that Reed found strange since he didn't like the talk of the devil at all. Now, hearing Prince had been found in an elevator floor on the first floor of Paisley Park, Prince's home and studio. This was troubling for his read, for Reed. Now, one time when he was talking to him privately, he said, you know what the elevator is, right? Reed said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil. This scared Reed. He doesn't like that kind of talk. He, too, is very heavily Christian. Not Jehovah's Witness, but Christian. So, for Reed, it was haunting that he was found on the first floor of an elevator. Because Prince worked out all the time. So he took this. And with the talk of the devil and such evil, I wonder if Prince is... No, many people are questioning... Prince's faith was he Christian. He spoke about his Jehovah's Witness faith many times. Plenty of controversy exists whether that means Prince was Christian or not. Therefore, looking to Prince's lyrics about faith, which he does mention a lot, just determines his belief. And he performed the cover of a Christian song called What If. What If What If had decidedly Christian lyrics, originally performed by a Christian artist, Nicole Nordman, I think. Now, Nicole, Christian singer who won multiple GMA Dove Awards, popular Christian songs. Now, Prince, through the What If song, asked if folks discovered they were wrong about their thoughts of religion. He spoke about his faith in songs like Holy River, where he described asking his ex-wife, Mate Garcia, to marry him. And I'm going to be talking about Mate. Prince waxed nostalgic about looking back at the one eye staring at nothing at all. And that was featured in many of his earlier videos, Prince Sings asked his listeners to ponder, as he did, who gave him life when there was none at all. Now, Prince came to the conclusion in his Holy River song that one gave the sun permission to rise up every day. And saying that he was proud to call that name. Yeah, he came out and he said, Jesus, neither here nor there about it. So any footage from upcoming private or public funerals or memorials for Prince might spill more about his faith if you worried about it. But as far as I could hear, because I've listened to all of his songs, I didn't, didn't just start following this guy. Yeah, obviously Christian very proud of it. He was also very connected to his own soul, to his own self. 
And something that most people don't know, and it's very important to know, because this was not a loser, this guy was not random at all. Most music now is tuned at 440 hertz. We've talked about this before. Prince uses 432 hertz in every song. This is known as the God frequency. It vibrates with the heart chakra and makes perfect sense why he had such a positive impact collectively and why he was loved by so many. 432 hertz is said to be mathematically consistent with the patterns of this universe. It is said that 432 hertz vibrates with the universe's golden mean, phi. It unifies properties of light and time and space and matter, gravity as well, and magnetism with biology, the DNA code, and the conscious. So the DNA and we're going to be talking about this because it's really important. Our DNA inside the cell is more like um, the gonads. This is not the pr- programming mechanism we've been taught. It is. And this is science. This isn't metaphysical this time. The cell structure on the outside is very important because we know that you can take all of the DNA outside of a cell and that cell will still live without it. Zero DNA. So when our atoms and our DNA start to resonate in harmony with the spiraling patterns of nature, when we find something that resonates with us, our sense of connection to nature or whatever we're bonding with becomes magnified. So the number 432 is also reflected in ratios of the sun and the earth and the moon as well as the procession of the equinox, the great pyramid of Egypt, Stonehenge, Sri Lankan um, Yantra, and most other sacred sites. So, what happened? Was this an Illuminati hit? The Simpsons in 2008 had this really strange um, episode where Homer Simpson, um, and I put this one on the page, Homer Simpson went and killed Prince for coming out against the music industry. And I'm sure they wanted to at the time absolutely sure they wanted to. So, was this an Illuminati hit? And, you know, on the Queen's birthday, when there were, he was one of three that died that day. China, um, forget the other na- lady's name, but also died this day. There's, there's a couple things. Prince being an artist whose house was fully wired electrically was living in an electromagnetic hellhole. We are all living in this now. Everyone. Our existence has become weaponized. And we've talked about this before. You know, with all the wireless, with with all of the smartphones, all this stuff constantly in her face. This obviously, especially for musicians, and I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of people who actually were stars and are entertainers, we're going to be seeing them not even just dying, we're going to see them going crazy. I think this is part of what's going on with the depression right now. And the first thing is, if you're listening to me, you're being exposed to a high amount 
radio frequencies. Cell phones, your tablets, your laptops, your Wi-Fi router, whether you have it on or off. I guess what's even worse is that we're conditioned to believe that there's no mal effects of these massive, constant radio frequencies 24-7, let alone the constant lights. We're living in this blue light. What would we even call it? We're being bathed in blue light. You would think that blue is calming. It's like the sky, but this blue light is not. We have no idea what the long-term effects will be. Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? Good. Yes, mobile technologies and the internet have created enormous leaps. I obviously am a gamer too, so I understand that. And progressions for the human family. At what cost does this increasing number of devices and towers and and vehicles in production every minute, what does it do for our bodies and musicians and artists who are constantly in a studio who are being bathed by this all the time and then you get on stage and then there's the lights on your head, through your ears, all the time. So let's talk about definitions, radio frequencies, microwave, radiation, Bluetooth. The FCC defines radio frequencies as radio waves and microwaves emitted by transmitting antennas are one form of electromagnetic energy. They are collectively referred to as radio frequency or RF. Energy or radiation. Note that the term radiation does not mean radioactive. Often the terms of electromagnetic field or radio frequency field are used to indicate the presence of electromagnet or RF energy. So the FCC admits that the radio frequencies, this RF, have their own electromagnetic field which are essentially on the low frequency. They're on, um, therefore, constant low frequency radiation is inevitable. That's what they say. Now, Bluetooth, wireless, of course, technology, like the ones singers use to hear the music. Now, the standard for... um, Exchanging data over short distances. This is a short wave, UHF radio wave, from 2.4 to 2.485 gigahertz. Bluetooth also has three different classes. Bluetooth uses a standard wire replacement communications protocol primarily for low power consumption with short range based on low cost receiver microchips in each device. Because the devices use a radio broadcast communication systems, they do not have to be in visual line of each other. However, a quasi-optical wireless path must be viable. Straight lines, basically. So range is power class dependent. Effective frequency ranges vary in practice. You think I have an image up on it, too, but you can find this stuff in, in Wikipedia. And officially, class 3 radios have a range up to 1 meter. Class 2 Commonly found mobile, um, 10 meters. Class 1, primarily used for industrial use cases, 100 meters. So, Bluetooth marking qualifies Class 1, in most cases, as 20 to 30 meters. Now, microwave. Microwaves are a form of electromagnetic energy with wavelengths, ranging from one meter 
to 1 millimeter with frequencies between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz. Giga. Now this is a broad definition. Of course it includes UHF and EHF. So millimeter waves. And various uses of different boundaries. In all cases, microwave includes the entire SHF band, 3 to 30 gigahertz, at minimum, with RF engineering, often restricting the range to between 1 and 100 gigahertz. Now, the pre prefix micro in microwave is meant to suggest a wavelength in the micrometer range. It does not. It indicates that the microwaves are small compared to the waves used in radio broadcasting. So the boundaries for infrared, terahertz radiation, microwaves, ultra-high frequency radio waves are different. So notice how Bluetooth falls within the range of microwaves wavelength. So we are aware and Prince was aware that radio frequencies he even has a song where he talks about the voices being sent into his head through the receiver on his arm that he got through a vaccination. That's your um, sign of Saturn on your left arm that I've talked about before. He was clued into this. He knew about it. So the radio frequencies, the cell phones, the Wi-Fi signals, the microwaves and Bluetooth are within the same wave band. Therefore, the rate of oscillation that these frequencies are moving at the same which means that the biological effects of each of these frequencies will be similar. There's a lot of controversial research regarding RF and tumors. Now, one of the main deterrents of the link between RF and tumor growth is the inconsistent data around anything long-term what this long-term exposure will do, what its effects will do. But in the last 60 years, we are not the same beings who are older than 60. We are bathed, especially in this 60 time, year time thing. We have been bathed with so much electromagnetic interference. And I mean from phones to television, right from the work Tesla did, the work Edison did, all of this. We are not the same beings because of a lot of things going on, obviously. But this has changed. And our entertainers are getting hit in even higher doses than us. Now, the latest upgrade to mobile cell service what we've talked about before and it's called 4G it's, it's been around about 6-7 years the long term effects of this particular upgraded signal we have no idea because it's happening to us though right now so if you switch your research keywords from cell phone signals RF to microwave MS you will start to find the exact information to prove the malefacts. Now, there are documents all over about this. One really good one from Andrew Goldsworthy that was out in 2008. The cell phone and the cell. This is why I brought up the cell. And the role of calcium. He makes some very accurate observations about the human body. He states that the human body makes a good antenna. 
since blood vessels, which are low resisted paths filled with highly conductive salty fluid, basically, connect virtually all of its parts. Even cell membranes, which are important, have a high resonance to DC, allow radio frequencies through because of their high capacity. So when you use a mobile phone or any of these devices, its signals will be transmitted to your body first. I mean, all the parts of your body, nowhere is safe. So the biological effects of electromagnetic radiation probably begin with an organism acting like an antenna. When you get enough, the radiation generates eddy currents flowing through it. And in the case of um, cell cultures, also through the surrounding medium. When they impeach on these delicate membranes that surrounds individual cells, they disturb their ionic structure. They destabilize them, long story short. We're aware that the human body receptacle. We are receptive to frequencies. You can check this out anywhere. This is on a cellular level. And what we've learned so far is what these radio waves are. That the human body is actually receptive to frequencies. There's a lot of scientific studies about this. Long-term microwave radiation. These kind of things. And even the FCC talks about what this is going to do. Because exposure to very high RF can result in heating, biological tissue. It breaks down um, your frontal lobes. So when that happens, you become depressed. The more frequencies you're getting, people change. That's why one of the reasons, too, that the soup that's happening in the far north and now we have three reserves that the children are killing themselves. It's kind of like what happens to the bees. We've talked about that. You get a cell phone around beehives, they go nuts. They stop reproducing. This is why I wanted to bring up Japan, who is very technological. Everybody has his cell phone. They're always playing video games. There's constant lights in the big cities. They are no longer having children. As a matter of fact, there's a big movement, and we've talked about this too. They don't even want to have sex. Why? Constant light and constant RF kills your pituitary gland. Amongst other things that it does is it kills your sex drive. So as of April 7th, this year, 2016, there are over 7.7 billion mobile users. Which is weird because do we have that many people? Now this is around the world. Some people have more than one phone, obviously, but most are likely unaware of the harm that they are exposing themselves to their loved ones. At the very least, we shouldn't be keeping these RF devices near our reproductive organs, exposing our genes. The future of humanity, if there is one, to anything low frequency and these carcinogens. That's why when I see people putting it in their pockets, I cringe. Or someone sitting with their laptop on their lap. <sighs> Don't do it. Or girls putting their mobile phone next to the breast. You might as well wear a sign going, I no longer want to procreate. Ever. 
now, millennials, are now serving as lab rats. To live grown up with digital technologies and the fate of the human family depends on the actions we take collectively going forward. Our children will be born already pre-existing massive amounts of RF, which the effect is still undetermined. We have no idea what this is going to do, 100%. Now, I've been reading a lot about, um, try to find his name. I think it's Jack, Jack Cruz, brain surgeon, who goes into this very, very deeply. His work is incredible. So, long story short here. There are ways to mitigate this. But you cannot fight this if you are depressed. You can't fight this if you're heartbroken. You can go outside and get sun. But it's another reason why Japan is having a problem. They like their people light-skinned. That's why, look at their anime. It's always white people. They get big European-looking eyes, and sometimes they're blue, and their skin is pale. If you don't go out in the sun, and it doesn't matter how melanated you are, you should be. Because the sun, that big, beautiful thing, even though they're doing stuff to our sky... Not as much as you think, I think, but there's problems because of everything we're using. You go out, you get full spectrum light. That is the best healer we have. There is no medicine on the earth that is stronger than the sun for you and your health. How do you tell when a person's sick? Anywhere in the world. When a person starts getting sick, they become pale closer they are to death, the paler they are. Always. Always. Prince was getting pale for the last seven years. He changed. Now, they won't come out and talk about um, whether or not he was officially sick, but I'll, I'll go into this. Well, and part of it's because of his religion. He didn't talk about those kind of things. One of those things about if you say it, you're you're calling it forth. You know what I mean? But he was. Look at his pictures. If he can find some without all the makeup on, it's hard. You know, he was pretty. Apparently, um quite the baller on the basketball court too so everything we've been told about why women like men I realize not every woman found him attractive but a lot of women obviously did I'm one of them this guy apparently in his little high heels and the little blouses he'd wear would kick your ass on the basketball court and then take your woman. So he had a lot. He was uh, had a lot going on. So when you look at health, there's this article that was in Far, Far, Fox News. Fox News that asked, "Does a low SAR rating?" Make a wearable safe. SAR is Specific Absorption Rate. It is the FCC's attempt to measure the rate of the body absorbs different types of frequencies. SAR in itself is problematic because basically it is derived to protect against the acute effect of heating from microwave radiation. It's kind of bizarre standard, really, because the effects, well, the effects of health community are concerned 
about are not thermal in nature. They're low. They're these intensity, this exposure, that are chronic over time. So the whole SAR framework is outdated. The medical community is evidently inconclusive on these RF, on all the frequencies, and does not even believe that the information provided by the FCC, that there are hundreds of studies right now with at least compelling evidence, the health effects of FRs. SAR was created as a standard to measure the effect of heat in microwaves. And notice the bald men over the past few decades. Notice the rise in cancers. Now this is from all electromagnetic use, right from Tesla, right from the beginning of electricity. Cancer has gone on the rise, on the rampage. Now, neither government agencies nor manufacturers of any of these products have the state of your health in mind. They construct devices to emit enough, just enough radiation to deteriorate us slowly over time. Every second, every cell in your body is in a constant battle of maintaining its frequency. Each one. All 30 trillion of them. And each one, and we've talked about this before, you are not one thing. You are 30 trillion things. <laughs> each one of them represent a body, or a sun, or maybe a galaxy. 30 trillion reasons to be protecting yourself. But don't forget about the potential cancer risk that we're all facing every single moment, which should make you think twice about leaving the laptop on your lap, the cell phone glued to your head for the 45-minute conversation with your mom or your girlfriend your boyfriend or whatever you're talking to we are voluntarily radiating ourselves simultaneously together as mobile internet devices become increasingly prominent increasingly powerful and as Google and Facebook discuss the spreading the internet to third world countries via drones that are just going to be constantly going over their heads. Over their heads means it's from the top of your head, your open chakra, they're going to be blasting into those people, some of them who have never had to live in these kind of environments. So the very state of the collective human consciousness is awakening even to even more heavy fire than in any time on the history of this planet. This war is silent. It is affecting us biologically, literally right under our noses. So you need to begin to educate yourself. But the world around you, do not take any information on its face value. Lay in knowledge, formation based on truth. And I'm not the hype. <laughs> to leave anyone I'm not the type to leave anyone hanging out there are things for our F protection orgone generators um, energy polarity products all kinds of things but there is nothing like that big thing outside there's nothing go out and get your sun but the other thing there is nothing stronger to heal us in love and when your heart's broken your body starts to physically deteriorate this one I wanted to bring you up about Prince Mate now you'll be hearing and probably seeing them post stuff on Facebook saying that this guy was perfect Prince did no wrong, that you didn't hear about him in scandals. You didn't see him have to settle out of court. 
those two things specifically are wrong. Absolute wrong. He had a boyfriend. Obviously, you, you look at his little outfits, you know, he's got a boyfriend too. Who um, sued him for palimony when they broke up. He was, I don't know, he's a, he's a baller, <laughs> this guy. He quietly did not let this go crazy. He paid the guy and said fine. And it was over and you hardly heard about it. That's why most people didn't hear about it. And he stayed with Mate. who worked with him. They were together all the time. You could tell by looking at them that there was real love there. And I'm not judging about the boyfriend situation. What was going on between the three of them, not my business. But you could see her love for him and his love for her. Something happened. She got pregnant, gave birth to a baby boy who had an illness, congenital, born with it, and died in the hospital. Crushing blow. He wanted to be a father. She wanted to be a mom. They were in love. They wanted the family thing. Next, she got pregnant again within about a year. Lost the baby after six months. They broke up after that. And I don't know if people listening have either lost a child or tried to... If you're in a relationship with someone after losing two children, no matter how much you love them, it's really hard to stay together. Because you're broken. Your heart's broken. When your heart is broken, your body starts deteriorating. Whether or not Princess Berm was somehow damaged from all of these. He's in a studio. He had a studio in his house. It was like a small box surrounded by this RF, the HF, microwaving himself. Now, this was a guy who worked out daily, vegetarian as far as I know, not a drinker, not a smoker, who really cared for himself. But I think what changed him, and he did remarry later, um, a lady in Toronto, it didn't last very long. Um, You can see, if you look at his pictures, a change in him physically. Yes, he still played. Yes, he was still funky as hell. But he got paler and paler and paler. And skinnier and skinnier. And he was always a skinny guy. He's everything girls aren't supposed to like. He was short. He was skinny. He had a high voice. But, you know, girls liked him. So, I think what finally killed him was heartbreak. A combination of things, obviously. But I'm leaning away from, it was Illuminati. Because he had fought the Illuminati three times in the bad asses way ever. And won. Every, every time. Every time. So this is not a stupid man. He was not slow. And when he was warned, because he paid attention to these things, that in 2008, the Simpsons predicted that he would be killed. Actually, they showed Homer Simpson strangling him. But the elevator. A lot of Prince's songs foreshadowed what happened, what, what is happening on this planet. And I can do a whole show, I think we've done a couple on them, on what his music says about the state of the world. And I don't think it was because he was Illuminati. I don't think it was because anyone was trying to kill him. I think this was a very aware 
man that he absolutely knew what was going on in this planet. He absolutely was taking care of himself. But I think, I think that um, he changed after they broke up. I really do. He wrote this song called The Ladder, which I've talked about The Ladder a lot. I think all of us, what we should have, you know, and I, I don't want to tell you what to do, but you should have a goal and a firm understanding of that goal. Put your mind to something and go there. If you want to really become the homo luminous, the light being, know that, behold, we saw that ladder going up and down. So what is it? This homo luminous itself is not an idea of the future. It has its roots in a much earlier time when men, knowing the body contained not only a soul, but several astral vehicles, began to have ideas of greater manifestation in our process here. Now, seeing that the next phase of life was, in fact, ethereal. Well, we'll go on with this when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Trace Elements Radio. Live again on TraceElementsRadio.com and Freedom Slips. Revolution Radio, Studio A. Good morning, everybody. Or afternoon, or, you know, so late you need to get the hell to bed. <laughs> Different times. So, let me talk about the latter. Because Prince was not a dummy at all. I think he chose. Although the part of him in an elevator really bothered me, bothered one of his friends. I want to read you a couple lines, not the whole thing, but a couple lines from this. Once upon a time in a land of sin a plenty, sin a plenty, there lived a king who didn't deserve to be. He knew not where he came from, nor where he was going. He never once said thank you. Never please. Again, this is the world we live in. People forget, and the ones who have a lot act like it doesn't matter what we've done. In the song, he said, the king didn't pay attention to anything around him because the king was looking for the ladder. And said that everyone's looking for the ladder, that everyone wants salvation of the soul. And the steps you take are no easy road, but the rewards are great for those who want to go. A feeling of self-worth. Everybody's looking. will caress you. For the answers, the size of the whole world will decrease. That's how the story started. And how it will end, and the love of God's creation will undress you. And time spent alone, my friend, will end. Everyone's looking for the answers, how the story started, and how it will end. What's the use in half a story, half a dream? You have to climb all the steps in between. So this, I don't think this man was caught off guard. I don't. He even talks about how it spirals. So he's talking about the Tesseract again. And becoming something different. A higher being. So this is an idea of the future. And it has its roots in everything we've learned about. And what there once was here on this planet. And seeing that the next phase of life 
is ethereal, whether it be a higher light being or a low density ghost. The strongest minds were put to work on mapping out the process of crossing to the next level of existence while still remaining active in this current one. This was referring to as keeping a foot in both worlds. Being in the world, not of it. You've heard all of those little cute little terms. But it can be seen in all of the Egyptian art that all voluminous is acting or is in the act of having a fully operational light body. So it's a value to take heed of the statement in regards to the latter because not all are going to make it to the next transformation. It is a great attainment or the great work alluded to in all of the alchemical works in um, most of the Buddhist works. Even Christianity, pretty much all religions if you get into it deeper and don't stay um, hooked on the stupid garbage stuff that is just meant to enslave you and keep you on your knees so you will worship something or be ready to like bend over and take it. So when a human departs this world, if they have found themselves base and not engaged in things of a spiritual nature, the spirit itself has not grown. And in fact, many have deteriorated, as we can see, which happens when living in a material, uh, materialistic, externalized world and life, plus all of the things attacking us, bad food, bad water, bad air, 30 trillion things could be killing us. If you are afraid of even one of those 30 trillion things, it will kill you. Know that in this human body, when they say a new virus is coming up, you have every virus you've ever come in contact with in your body. One of those, at least one, of those cells is carrying that virus. There is nothing out there that you don't already have in here, in this body. When something affects you, that frequency has affected you. And most likely you are sad about something. You have a broken heart. Many ways you can outfix this. Falling in love. Finding something that you love. Easiest, simplest way. Could be a person. Don't take them prisoner could be a thing. Find something you love and do that. If there is no passion, there is no life and you will die. And scientists know this. That's why it's not about making you healthy because they could. They absolutely could. If you look at Bruce Lipton's work on mind over matter and the phase and consciousness, I love his work, by the way. He's puts things easy. And he's a doctor, so he can get complicated if you like. Talks about what they knew, what changed, and who changed it. Basically, when um, the male dominated religions took over, our soul was forgotten about pushed under the rug. The mother was raped and killed. Or at least held a hostage and veiled. So, working on this is important. Because all of us will die. And it will be sooner or later, depending on what you do. What actions you take. 
and it's a constant fight. Like for most of us, it's a constant fight, constant battle. Because again, you are carrying absolutely everything that you have ever been in contact with. And if you've been bitten by a mosquito, you got a whole bunch of things that you were not in contact with. Every lover you've had, maybe every touch, every time you've gone in an elevator and touched the buttons, every time you've touched the door handle, every time you've shaken a hand, you are connected. You are catching things. You are bringing it into your body. So, if Zika is around, we most likely have it. But things don't affect you. We've all known people who smoked and drank and did none of the things you're supposed to do, and it's like they live forever. Why? Why do they live forever? Because those things aren't affecting them because they're strong. And being strong is easy. Go outside, get some sun on days that aren't sunny, get some cold, smile, find something you love. Best medicine in the world. Because you can't take their medicine to heal yourself. It wasn't ever meant to heal you. And they know this. So we have to address, or at least clarify, what to do here so that we will be ready for the next stage. In this case, upon passing anyway, the soul itself enters a realm of the phantoms, lower vibration beings, many call them ghosts or shadows or the shades. This condition the person has entered a 2D or even a 1D, which correspond to their level of senses, making them unaware of their past. In this state, they wander about, at times torment anything that comes in their view. There are areas on Earth that are much closer to this dimension, and we speak of many, and many remark on those areas as those that are haunted, plagued by apparitions. This is descending the ladder. In the case that one has come to a higher learning, an awareness that death is only a door to another realm, it is an awareness of spirit that will allow it to choose a door, manifest a gate, when they begin to ingest the food of the spirit, which is knowledge, pure essence, as crystals, as fluids, as light, it includes metal in your monatomic state, the soul actually grows. It becomes much more powerful than the body as it gains strength, which makes it able to subdue the flesh. And to bring this to a clarity. The body is a cage. It is a carbon-based structure known as the 666. Six electrons, six protons, six neutrons. We don't know how many morons there are. Obviously, there's a lot of them. The name is the number of a man, and he is the beast. When the spirit is strong enough to subdue the beast, one becomes the master over the primary reality, being able to bend and to break the quantum rules of that reality. This is the birth of Homo Luminous. And doubt it not, some have achieved this, especially those who display accelerated thought, not speech, but thought. Speech, the only thing speech was for was to confuse you. So you didn't know what the other person was feeling. It was another thing used to disconnect you from the others, from yourself. Speech, bad thing. 
That's why these languages are so complicated. That's why these languages say one thing, mean another. This is why you must be like a sphinx. The sphinx who is sitting there looking towards the sunrise whose body is like an animal. We don't know 100% which animal, by the way. Could have been covered in scales. I'm thinking dog, scale, lion, something. And the face of a man or a woman. Depends on who you talk to. Human and beast. A commit chimera, if you will. So it should be clear anyway that the transformation into what's next has nothing to do with anything good or anything evil. This light body, if you will, has been achieved by people of both sides. As the same laws and rules apply to both parties when it comes to calibration, The energy itself is passive and can be used in various degrees. You don't have to be a good person to be strong. Look at uh, Her Majesty Lizard. Just turned 90. Got all kinds of money. Got grandchildren running around. Got a big house. One's all land. Still got a man alive. You don't have to be a good person. You need to be committed. So the laws of karma and dharma still apply. But one would need to closely consider what that actually means as karma and dharma is seldom understood. It is, at times, confused with a simple notion that if you do good, you will receive good in return and edgewise. That's shallow explanation of karma and dharma. It's not true, nor is it factual. We will receive, well, I'll reserve that for another time to explain this in more detail, because it's a life's work to understand it fully. And on that note, a life is but a moment for this homo luminous as the first thing that is presented is the non-existence of time or the ability to be outside of time. This is better understood as such. In the time it takes one to blink and activate this luminous can come into your environment. Move several things around and be out of your local area before your eye reopens as a vibration of light traveling straight lines. It is the light speed. It is dense, fleshly life forms that move as though they are rocks. Even a rock itself is moving. However, it's a vibration that allows you to believe it is not moving due to its density. Having access to this wavelength allows you to perceive thoughts as a signal. And thus this light body can read minds by reading the signal that is in transmission from one's person's node or your cortex. One with no imagination at all can still add to what is possible for such a life form, time travel, remote viewing, spontaneous regeneration, hyper communication, instant manifestation of thought forms into 3D. We could be doing much better than we are. There will always be a normal world or the mass, simply called the masses. Sounds like a growth isn't it? They will never perceive that there are greater things Well, they're at this particularly low level of thought. But earth is a vineyard and some grapes are fermented 
and ready for fine wine. Many are just juice. And that's it. And they will be another. They will never be anything else. But I'm sure the wine grape doesn't talk down about the regular grape. As a matter of fact, we've talked about what plants do with each other. They know who their family is. They actually even protect it. They may not even see the other kind of grape, even if it's growing beside them. But time is always present to make a transformation, to become different, better. And this 3D society has activated humans right here, right now, in these bodies. Although, you know, the term human is sketchy at best. Because 30 trillion cells, and most of us are not made up of what you would think of as human cells. Doctors have proven this. We have some that look plant-like. We have some that look animal-like. We have some they can identify. And it's most likely, most likely, because everything that's passed through this solar system that the mother has wanted, she has had and brought it in. Everything that walked or rode or flew by, she grabbed. And we have a piece of this. We are Tiamat's monsters. And me, at least, I'm damn proud of it. That's right. <laughs> they have spent so much money looking into our DNA. And by the way, they own that now. They do. They own the DNA. It's to make drugs for you. Because they have taught people that you need drugs. You don't. You don't. But this is still third dimension. The power remains unbalanced here. Unperfected as the earth, which is on its wobble still is trying to make its own personal ascension. This act is imminent. We are seeing the earth's changes. We are seeing the earth moving. The crusts itself are opening up and moving and flowing. The sun is acting different. The other planets are acting different. They know that she is about to change. Now the sheer fact that esoteric knowledge and the desire of its acquisition is now becoming so prevalent, so prominent. It should be an indication, should be all you need to know, that something of a graduation is on the horizon. The world of this luminous is entirely proactive. The foundation appears as they take the next steps versus the foundation that's already been built. This is easier to understand as your dream world, where you make its construct, you make it up, and you live with a pure generation of what your mind can create with the data that has been gathered over various experiences of this transformation. Learning from every experience, following your DNA back to the one who is most likely um, a viral form. Sorry, but most likely. And then coming up. And then going back. And then finding what you missed. Pick through these things. That's, of course, if you are connected to your body. Some people aren't. I understand that. I absolutely understand that. That's why we're having so many people with autism. We could say it's the drugs, it's the food, it's the nature. I would say it's because they don't want to talk to other people. I'd say all the autoimmune diseases with me, and I'm talking about myself here, I've chose not to feel my body. 
That is a huge thing. It's the other side of autism. I was talking to someone about this the other day. The males in my family, many of them are autistic. Or what do you call it? OCD. You know how they, <laughs> they'll do one thing and they'll do it forever. And you'll lose your mind watching them. I'm like that too. But different sides of the scale of them. The boys, autistic. So they're cutting themselves off mentally from everyone else. Me, I'm cutting myself off physically from this body. That is a choice. This is choosing death. They're choosing abandonment. Both are scary choices. But you can't listen to doctors on how to fix this. No food is going to fix this. This is a spiritual malady. It is. I recognize it. Fighting it, I can't do it with their drugs. There's no pill going to do this. So each of us has our own battle. And with everything thrown at us, it's constantly. You never get to the top. At least I don't think so. You constantly have to fight. And this is happening right now. It's easier to understand the dream world part. The constructs take control of that. And you can either be an observer or a creator. All the galaxies, which are infinite in number, are formed this same way. Although the common human being is still yet to learn such things. And most of the alien beings who think they know what's going on here, they don't know these things. They don't. The more one becomes aware the more they release themselves from the dependencies and the crutches of the commoners and step into the next level. Even this is a loose explanation of it, of what this really is and the experience during this transformation. I do hope that you can extract something from what I've said. I'm here for any further elaborations. We are the new beings. We are the new society barking on an ancient feet. We are the chosen ones. So any support that can be rendered is much appreciated, of course. And do you know that we're making this information available to everyone So you can support yourself. You need to consider the difference between understanding, understanding, overstanding to increase the flexibility of an otherwise bland language, such as English. But other languages in use right now are the same. Low, slow. Because a word doesn't become a world Until you add an L. In the beginning, the Elohim said, let us make man. This is the beginning. This is the making of an external God. As in, well, as it states in the Bible, Psalms 82.6, I tell you, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. How many more times does one need to be told that they have within themselves what is necessary to rise above all the ideas of scarcity and lack of power which breeds control and your domestication? I see people as domesticated beings, almost everyone. Weak. Selfish, unprepared. However, what are you rising from? Where are you going? What is there? Who will be with you? Will you be alone? These are questions that will need to be answered by the adept. 
since the proclaimed beginning of this current segment of time, which man and woman have found their spirits encased in physical bodies, small physical bodies, weak physical bodies, most of in in constant service to the gods. This can no longer be overlooked and imagined not to be so. There has been a constant track record to prove that just about all the instructions, the guidance, the cultures, the modes and molds of life, even the languages themselves have been passed down from a gradual or graduated life form. These advanced life forms contain also in their core the same thing we have within ourselves. There is a spirit which finds its original generation from the starter of all things. And this spirit is known in Kemet as the unbegotten because no one can decipher its origin its composition. This is this is the ark. And in the Bible there's a constant reference to arks. As it states, Noah was told to gather all the creatures in the ark in pairs. As a child, that may be enough of a story. As an adult, you can't be silly enough to believe all the animals in the world were squeezed into a a wooden boat in pairs. But one should not discredit the story altogether. It appears there are several arcs and archaeos that hold together great portions of vast intellect along with their applications. And the more we're finding out is some of us are an ark. And with all of these cells, think about it, we can carry a lot of stuff. (laughs) So this is gradually, or, and actually it's a command for the gathering of what's going to be stored in the cells. The DNA. So Genesis. This is Genesis. It's what it really is. The generations. The genies, or the genies of Isis, who are always veiled. The veil of Isis means the barrier that keeps one hidden from the real world. It keeps one in the garden, secluded away from everything else. In the secret garden. And in secret, they operate the secret garden. Isis as Venus consort of many gods and thus she has spawned many generations with gods producing many beings that are in fact part serpent because Venus is the serpent queen the dragon queen the red queen she is a nana keepers of the mes M-E-S of a great deal of names and mains, and amens. And I continually pull off these veils. As the word veil is an anagram, too, for evil. And it can now be proven that this current flesh, or the Adam, is an organic vehicle constructed by beings called gods to allow a spirit to inhabit or to allow the spirit inhabitant of the vehicle to transverse this plane called 3D under the limitations of the body. And the body features five major shapes of its core geometry. An orb, a triangle, a square, a pentagram, a hexagon. All but the orb itself are simple and basically more complex triangles. There is something hidden, a hidden mystery here, 
if one becomes fully convinced that they are the body, which is the side effect of looking in the mirror or the looking glass for too long, they actually begin to believe that they are only flesh. The spirit inside of the body is so mystical and original again, cannot be dated, it can't be comprehended, not in its totality. And when one realizes the play and escapes the fall pretenses and dominations of this body and mind, you become activated, become a spiritual being. Spirits are globules of etheric sensors of great pleasure and perception capable of perpetual orgasm because that's really the organ energy sorry guys you don't have to build that people who are still making their little plastic molds I just laugh laugh and laugh so anyway you can inherit the persona of the creator this is our meant immortal timeless perfect in every way as you become aware of who you are and there's no separation between us and the one except the gods and the lords thus attempt to put themselves in between to speak for us to be an intercessor it's that simple and I will show you how it has been made way more complex than it really is. I call it the top of the net. And you have discovered the mystery. You are at the top of the net in the matrix. Now you await passing through into total consciousness as you have already begun to venture out of this and through the lucid sleep and the vision quests and the dream times, the higher places and planes are destined to be your primary reality. And you now have sampled a total emancipation, like Prince was saying. And your thought may even be at times When is the wall going to open and the portal await me? Many have yet to figure out it's available to open inside of you. There is, of course, a little more to do. And that is the one reason you are here. Because life is very active. I tell you now, once you pass through and are again surrounded by individuals, but this time... It is very much different. Those you exchange with are awake and aware. They are living life. While what lies below are the sleepers or the masses that are made up and have made made up the foundations, the principles. And we stand upon them. From the view of man, do not know and do not care. Life comes in levels. It always has. Each level separated by a buffer that allows one not to cross into the other's world, although sometimes they are very visible to each other. This is the void set to separate dimensions. And although one may be heavily instructed, Each will have crossed it on their own. Because you see principalities and rulers on TV, like the Queen of England and the Pope. However, this does not mean you could go and talk to them. Well, I should actually say it. They're complicated things. They exist on another level, minus the argument that if that level is lower or higher. It's obvious that the maddened dreamer 
who is fed up with oppression would say that he or she is lower. The realist, however, would immediately recognize them as currently higher and would go into action on finding a way to rise above them. They are mere emperors or lords of imps. That's what that means. So surely there's much higher. This does take a sober estimate of self, not to be pulled up with pride. Look at the dedication of one who wins world medals. Then understand what you will have to do with your mind to make yourself equal. And to see the current hidden, one must be real and at least sleepwalking, but not sleep. One thing that has become clear and has been documented in all religious circles is that the involvement of the Naturu, Neferu, also known as the Netters, the Elohim, the Nephilim, etc., etc., etc. These beings have been reported time and time again, assuming human form. The forms are sometimes a little greater in stature than the current edition of human because they are the Time Lords that comprehend the navigation of the 40 and have set up certain locations, locales, and a waypoint within. These beings are accompanied by special powers. More simply, chakras turned on. So let it be clear that the chakra is a unit of spirit, not the body. And the body has organs, and they can work abilities through sound. The netaru, the netters, the nephilim, the giants, and in my personal interaction with gods who are, in most cases, just as separated from the Most High, in likelihood and in demeanor, than an unconscious person to a conscious person. I've been able to prove many things based on fact, experience, not just books and knowledge and regurgitation of something that sounds super cool, So knowing is simply not enough. It is just the beginning. And many things that I will present today and for the next little while are really obvious and right in your face. And it may be of value to look at yourself when this is over and ask, why did I not see that? It was right in front of my face. The seeker is always having these moments. It is then that you will discover that it is not that you didn't see it. It is that something else that gauges when it is time, when you are ready to see it. The dossier, it develops your inability to see what is right in front of you. This has been put together to lift the veil off many. There will be decisions to make and one must not ignore making these decisions because the time is upon us. Mankind has brought time with the same money that is now becoming worthless. They have grossly miscalculated how much time the human race can exist if ideas of this current regime come to fruition. Fruition. If this tree bears fruit, Earth cannot continue as an unconscious warship. And I've talked about the Venusian warships in China. Our new boyfriends. <laughs> Let's hope that future doesn't come out. Not India and not China, because if they if they win, 
this round, we are so screwed. Like, pretty much literally screwed. So the God of the Bible, Yahweh, or Jehovah, also Jove, known by the Greeks as Zeus, who is Isus, even has Saturn or Satan in his, what do I call it, routine. Because they are all into the same thing. They all sprang forth from the same tree. There is something above them on an entirely different level. And they are constantly in awe of that. The confusion in shooters amongst the beings themselves as they are sons of an already quarrelsome father god. This is the nucleus behind Orion Wars. The sons of gods are called Baals, B-A-A-L-S, which is also synonymous for lords in English. Since the Baals have always and are always fighting, proclaiming each other great over the other, like Joseph's brother, such situations ensue when one begins to re-edit the main work that they all document their legacy in. This is, of course, the Bible. His story. Not yours, per se. It begins as such. In Ecclesians 6.12, Jesus explains that they are in a war, not with flesh and blood, meaning the general inactivated humans cannot do anything about it. The contest and the war is amongst principalities and rulers. So they want you to join in a war that a standard sleeper is not equipped to fight. You can't even comprehend it. They can't. They won't. And I will show these two sides. And they are basically brothers who now have become serpent brothers, if they weren't already, warring against each other. Their warring brothers are always the same. Al and N and Lil and Anki, Cain and Abel, Israel and Ishmael, Jesus and Lucifer, on and on and on. Neither side is good. The reward is greater control. And part of the booty is the unconscious humans. Read the tarot papers. Now statements are made as such. I am the Lord and there is no one else. Isaiah. I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do these things. And again, this is the confusion and it continues. Psalms. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell within thee. So in order to create evil, it has to be inside you. But this scripture says that there is no part of of this that exists with the God of the Bible. This is truth and lies mixed together. The God of the Bible says that he is not the author of confusion. But as you will see later, he causes a whole bunch of confusion to the species of man. And I have hundreds of such contradictions, but there are some that are more important than others. The constant contradictions are ignored by believers, putting themselves into further states of sleep. The more you believe a lie, you have just taken another pill. And the whole book itself is a mind job of great epic proportions and should be considered as such. Prophecy is a plan to profit, guys, Freaking Frankie again. 
So the idea to rewrite the future and the past so people can alter their true inherent beliefs of what they really are. The character Jesus is alive as a free reigning thought form now. And it should be clear that he never physically walked this earth during times he was said to. Again, he may be walking through dimensions now because that is just how magic works. Off people's belief, of course. Out of these historians around during the times of Jesus, none of them recorded them. Not to mention Jesus was also with 12 disciples. If 13 men are together healing the sick, opening heaven in front of everyone, nobody will miss telling that story. Especially if their whole, well, if it's your whole lifestyle to do that. So Pliny the Elder, Phalion, Philo, Judaeus, Phaedrus, Petronus, Lucius, Florus, Lacanus, Justice of Tiberius, Calumia, Annas, Persis, Plutarch, and on and on and on. Rufus. Nobody mentioned this guy. Valerius Maximus. All of these scholars were around during the time that Jesus and the twelve guys proclaimed to move about. Not one of them logged him. No one talked about him. Seneca, nope. Nothing. No one mentioned this guy. So as I said before, of all these beings spring from one particular tree, Thus they are on a collective hive mind. Much like the same system of the reptilians. And, you know, we've talked about them before. That they're on. Same system. This is why the God of the Old Testament is so adamant about keeping a pure bloodline. This also exists with the so-called elite of today. And we'll go into this some more on Thursday. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you have a good day. Bye for now.